Good morning. It is so hot up here this morning. It's absolutely magnificent, but there is a bit of a breeze which does help, so I'm not actually overheating. <laughs> but what was overheating is I got up here to find, do you know the little Cavalinero that I bought from the small Adrian Halls last week? It was looking a little bit sad because it's in those little tiny pots. Uh, so I've decided to get it in the bed. And this is the bed that had the field beans in or some of the field beans. We just chopped them off at the base, chopped up the foliage on top and then mulched over the top of the whole lot. Leaving their root balls in just under the surface so that all of those little nitrogen nodules that they've been producing are all there available for the brassicas. And now I'm planting into it. So hopefully these are going to be much happier now they're in the ground. I'll give them a really good water and they should be set to go. Plant rescue complete. I'm actually gonna take advantage of how hot it is today to wash down the greenhouse because this is a proper soggy job and doing it in the cold isn't much fun. But today is so hot, I don't mind being absolutely soaked through. <laughs> So I'm gonna just about start using the greenhouse a lot more. I mean, last year we had quite a lot of stuff in the greenhouse already by this time, but obviously I'm running behind this year. I don't quite know what happened, but I am. I'm pretty sure by this time last year, we actually had things potted up, you know, into their proper pots going out here. Considering I'm only just about to re-sow my tomatoes, that is a bit of a shocker. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna sort it all out. It needs a bit of a tidy. I'm gonna take the trellis off so that I can wash behind it. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna use the trellis the same way this year as I did last year. Um, I'm not sure how successful it was. I might go back to using the plastic netting, you know, the, um, what's that stuff called? The uh, like two inch plastic cattle mesh, is it? I just felt that the things that were climbing had a much better, so there was, the holes were so much smaller that they could really cling on better. And with these large holes from the trellis, I found that a lot of the fruit was fruiting on the wrong side and then I couldn't get it back through again. So didn't think that one through particularly well. And I can use this trellis outside behind the back of the pond to kind of bolster that area a bit. So it's got a bit dirty in here. It's mainly just dust. I don't know um, if anybody else remembers, like a couple of months ago, we had all of those like Saharan desert sand kind of come over in the rain and it's really stuck itself to the outside, particularly of the glass. So I'm gonna give it a really good scrub down, hopefully increase the light levels in here because it's got pretty dirty over the winter and uh, then I'll be able to start using it, which is quite exciting.
soggy much. <laughs> Before I start putting stuff back in there, do you remember these ones? These are the ones that I have replaced with the full size bricks around the top of the pond area where the old flower bed was. I'm gonna use them to level up the bench that's in there because last year, I did have blocks underneath them, but the ones at the back, they've kind of slipped through and now it's leaning back, which means that when we put the trays on there, everything at the back gets watered and everything at the front dries out. Not fantastic. So I'm gonna go and try and level that up before I put anything back in there. Marvellous. ended up taking all of those blocks out and digging down where it was uneven because I realised I was going higher and higher and higher uh, and I want as much height between that bench and the roof as possible because that's where the aubergines are going to go and it always gets really crowded in that peak so I took all of it out and I've sunk it down instead. <laughs> anyway it's flat now which is excellent and I'm going to put the big trays on the top of that and then I'm going to do a mammoth session of sewing. It's going to be courgettes pumpkins, cucurbits in general. So that's the melons, the cucumbers, all of that kind of stuff. I'm gonna get that done. And I was gonna have them all at home because uh, I normally start things like that off at home. Uh, but obviously I've left it very late this year because I don't really have an explanation. <laughs> I just have, I mean, not too late. It's still perfectly within time, but it's much later than I would normally do it. But uh, I don't wanna have them at home in case whatever was wrong with the tomatoes is going to spread onto them because although it hasn't affected the peppers or the chilies i do think it affected the basil that was in there because the basil went black stemmed and folded over and i had trouble growing basil before because it can be a little bit finicky when it's in pots or whatever um, normally it's fine but sometimes it just like decides it's not happy and then it gives up really quickly but uh, it went black on the, in like specific parts of the stems and then folded over a bit like the tomatoes so i'm a bit mm, don't want anything else growing at home basically i'm going to do all of them, the rest of my seedlings up here in the greenhouse hence the greenhouse tidy but after i get these trays in i'm just going to set myself up on the floor lily's here girlies are having a nice time out about i'm just going to have a lovely afternoon sowing seed i will talk you through the ones that i'm growing but you will have seen this in my list anyway so it's not going to be an enormous surprise uh, they were on my april sowing list and what's the date now middle of may <laughs> oh well oh well it's not too late i was just ambitious all right so that's what i'm gonna do I'm definitely going to look into getting some trays that actually fit because look how annoying is that looks like it's about halfway but it's not it's way over and I can't fit another ones on there mm. actually I do have a short fat one that might fit It's a dream. Okay, I'm gonna rinse them off actually with the hose and then 
mammoth, beautiful afternoon sitting in the sunshine, sowing some seeds. What do you want, little sausage? Mills is ambling towards me because she saw me rummaging in the area where her tin normally is, but it's my, just my coffee cup. It's just my coffee cup, Mills. It's the wrong tin, girly. Right, let's sew some stuff. I'm gonna do a whole new load of chard. So that is all the ones that I'm growing already, which is the Frankie Seeds Bietta one, just the bog standard green number. I'm going to be doing a rainbow chard, the mixed one. I've got rhubarb chard, which is just the red stemmed one and the Lucullus, which is the really pale one. Still haven't picked up any Ford Hook Giant Seed. I don't know what I'm playing at. Uh, yeah, I, I need to get on that. <laughs> I need to get myself in gear over this thing this is just isn't working anyway getting the chard in i'm also going to be doing another round of beetroot so i've got uh one set that are just about what a month old i've got one set already in the bed and i'm going to do another set now which is just the now i say chiogia but i've been told repeatedly it's chiogia so i'm going to say chiogia from now on and um what was the other one detroit rubris six so that's going to be the beetroot and the chard going together. I'm going to do another load of the leeks because this will be my third sowing of leeks. The first lot were looking fantastic and they just got completely um, fried by the sunshine because they were tucked behind something. So that wasn't so great. And the other lot are coming on fine, but I don't think I've done enough. So <laughs> I'm going to do some more leeks. It's going to be muscle bro this time. I'm going to put in some more Cavalanero seed. I don't need many. I'm just doing them in batches of six. Uh, like the ones that I bought from the garden centre, just in sixes, and then we should have it all year round, which will be really nice because that's basically the best kale that we grow. I just absolutely love it. Cavalanero is the kale that I find the easiest to not only grow, because all the kales generally are quite easy, but I find it the easiest to manage when things aren't going well. <laughs> like if everything's covered in white fly and sooty mould and you know they're covered in aphids and things are going wrong I find with the really really tight curly kales it's such a palaver to clean them up that sometimes I have to just I just give up and it, a lot of it goes in the compost bin whereas with the Cavalanero because it's just that bit flatter you can really clean it up much more easily and I just find that it's just an easier kale to deal with from that point of view and also I think it tastes best out of all of them so what's not to love? We're going to be going big on Cavalanero again this year like we did last year. And then it's a case of courgettes, melons, cucumbers and pumpkins. I've decided not to sow any crown prints because George, who's just a couple of plots up from us, has got some spare plants of those. So that's brilliant, which means I don't have to go and buy the seed. And then it's going to be Marina de Chiogia. <laughs> got it right? Maybe not. Anyway, that one and... Um, Ijikukuri, that's the ones we're doing this year. I talked to you last week about all the different, was it last week or the week before? I talked to you anyway already about all the different cucumber varieties that we're growing. We've got um, Market Moor, Socrates, Crystal Apple, Lemon and Green Apple, I think. Anyway, quite exciting cucumbers. I'm really looking forward to those. Courgettes, I've just got um, Striata and... Uh, green which are both from Frankie Seeds. Not growing any marrows this year. Oh and there's also a patty pan that I'm going which is Patterson Gagat which I think I said last year so the year before last it was one of the most successful things we grew. It was prolific and tasted great. I'm not a great fan of the yellow patty pans. You know are they called sunburst? Sun, sun something anyway the really standard one. I find they go a bit bitter for me but the Patterson Gagat, I just thought, was prolific and they stayed, even when they got quite big, they stayed really, really sweet and delicious. Uh, and in the same sort of category, there's the Trombocinos as well. The um, like halfway between a winter squash and a courgette type shebang. I'm also going to be throwing in a third wave of the lettuces. Okay, not a bad afternoon's work. <laughs> We've got a lot going on in here. I feel really quite calm about the sewing situation, which is a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Fantastic. 
and there's definitely more light in here. Okay, it's not pristine because there's quite a lot of lime scale on the glass, but I think the potatoes that are inside are going to be definitely happier because it was getting a bit gloomy in here, to be honest. <laughs> and gloomy greenhouse isn't ideal. Obviously, I've got to pick um, asparagus before I leave. <laughs> of course. But yeah, I think that's about me done for the day, actually. Um, I have enjoyed the last, oh, how long has it been? Two hours. I've just been sat on the floor listening to some silly murder mystery and uh, sewing stuff. I feel like I've caught up loads. You know, I've been whinging on about, oh, it's quite windy. You know, I've been whinging on about being behind in my sewing and all this kind of stuff. Well, I feel like I've just caught up. I've just got it right. Oh, Ooh, I need to pick some nine star as well. Actually, there's quite a lot of things I need to pick. I'll do that before I go. There is not a cloud in that sky. Can you see like that? Look, look at that. Absolutely nothing. It's magnificent. I'm like, this is what happened to me last week. Um, it was on the vlog, actually. Just as I was about to leave, I was just like, oh God, but this time of the evening, when it's been a warm day and like the sun's just, oh, it's just beautiful. But I've got to go to the supermarket. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick whiz round picking. We gotta get you in, girly whirly whirlies, we have, yes. And uh, yeah, then it's home.
ya. Good afternoon. A bit of a spontaneous one this, but the weather is so magnificent and we're down by the river. So just decided to jump on the ferry to head up to Hampton Court Palace. Not going to be going into the palace because firstly, they charge an absolute fortune. Secondly, you used to be able to go into the gardens for free, but they won't let you do that either anymore. So really the aim of the game is just to do the ferry ride. You catch the ferry from Richmond Pier and then it takes about an hour and 15 minutes each way. It's a really lovely stretch of the river. You go past lots of really uh, beautiful gardens, beautiful little sort of uh, boat houses. It's just a lovely trip. And on a day like this, when the sky's blue and it's beautiful, you can't beat it. So we're just heading towards Hampton, have a sandwich and then jump back on the boat again and probably go and have a beer in the sunshine. I think that sounds like an excellent way to spend a Thursday afternoon. So although there's no real aim to this, I thought you might enjoy a bit of scenery. Well, what a way to spend an afternoon. Absolutely wonderful. If I can complain about absolutely anything, it's the fact that my glass is plastic. But, you know, <laughs> I'm sure I can cope. Okay, let's have a look at what's come up in the greenhouse. Okay, how are we doing? Look at this, we've got action already in the zinnia pot. Woo! <laughs> Tomatoes are looking good, that's fine. No death lurgy happening just yet. And everything else looks undisturbed, which is something I was worried about. I don't normally sow direct into the greenhouse because we've got mice and things and often it all gets disturbed and roughed up. But so far, everything looks okay. Hey Lil, everything looks okay. That's what we want, isn't it? 
It is another gorgeous day up here. Hey girls, isn't it beautiful? May's being very good to us so far, isn't it? What, Belly? Hey? Had a really good mix of rain and beautiful hot sunny days. Yes, I really did only pop up here just to check on the girls, make sure they've got food and water because I've got quite a lot to do today. But boy, do I not want to go anywhere. It's so nice up here. It was meant to be really cloudy today as well. The forecast just said like grey all day and only 16 degrees. Well, I can tell you it's not 16, it's absolutely baking. And the sun's out, it's gorgeous. I've got so much to do at home. But I might just stay up here. <laughs> I don't have any um, like tripod or recording gubbins with me at all. Um, but I'm going to do a bit of pottering. So be prepared for some interesting camera angles. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't bring myself to go home just now. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm going to pick some asparagus. I'm going to pick some spring onions. Um, what else am I going to do? I might do a bit of clearing in the poly tunnel. Mum can't get up here at the moment um, because her hip's really bad and she's now waiting for an appointment from the hospital. So uh, she's not up here. It's just me. Um, I'm supposed to be going to Waitrose, but come now, that can wait. There are better things to do in life than head off to Waitrose. And things have gone mad actually. There's loads of stuff that needs kind of having their flower heads taken out. You see the sorrel down here. Ooh, finger in the wrong place, that one. Um, that, will that will live forever basically, but as long as you take the flower spikes out. So I'm gonna strip that of its flower spikes. Yeah, I'm just gonna do some pottering, I think. Okay, yeah, just for clarification, in case anyone's in case anyone's wondering, I am dressed like a teenage boy from the mid-90s. I don't know why these things happen. Sometimes, sometimes I question my choices in the morning, but you know, I wasn't going anywhere social. <laughs> just to the supermarket. I don't mind if I look daft. Uh, yeah, but that's uh, just in case anyone was wondering. Yeah, these are the younger broad beans, you know, the ones I planted out with the parsnips between them. Uh, black flyy much, yes. <laughs> Although I'm heartened to say there are masses of ladybirds everywhere at the moment, so I hope they're gonna be all right. But the parsnips are coming up, look at this. I thought we had really poor germination as per usual with parsnips, but actually they're all just starting to come up now. They are popping up all over the place. Some at this end and also nasturtiums are appearing all over the show as well. <laughs> so these guys, they've really stood up and they are growing quite well. Uh, the bigger ones, 
They are luckily, I mean, fingers crossed so far, not so bad on the Black Fry front. There is a bit, but it's not terrible. And again, absolutely covered in ladybirds. Look, these two are having a nice time. <laughs> So hopefully these are going to be covered in ladybird larvae very soon and they've got perfect lunch waiting for them. There's so many things living on here. Look at this chap. More ladybirds. More ladybirds. And another one. <laughs> it's like they've just got red dots all over them, these plants. They're just tons of them. This is what happened last year with the field beans. I don't know if you remember, we left the field beans and then they just were absolutely swamped. You could barely see the leaves for the ladybirds. It was amazing. But these guys are coming along really nicely. The bottom halves of them are perfect still. And we've got broad beans coming. So it's not gonna be long and we will have broad beans. So that is the first two sowings of carrots in. That is Touchon, my ultimate favourite, and also Jean Obtuse. So it's an orange one and a yellow one. And then I will sow these every three weeks in this bed until it's full. We've got to make sure that we leave space for one really late sowing in this little box because we only pulled them, what, two weeks ago. And although a couple of them had started to flower, you know, they'd sent up a spike, so they had a really hard core inside the carrot itself. They make perfectly good soup and all the rest of them were absolutely delicious and what a treat so early in the year. going to take this lettuce home with me as well today it's just starting to get you know when they just get that little bit taller and then you know they're about to go so I'm going to take the whole thing rather than just you know cut and come again pick it from the bottom come with me chap 
There we go. Oh, it's a beautiful lettuce. Oh, I've left some leaves behind. <laughs> Never mind, just take them. But yeah, this is such a nice lettuce. It's so soft. Question is though, do I try and put it in my bag or do I just carry it home? What do you think, Lil? Risk the bag? Hello? Bag or carry? Yeah, I think I'm gonna risk the bag. It's not normally the getting it in that's the problem, it's getting it out, but. <laughs> it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Right, I think I'm gonna have to head off, which is unhappy, but there we go. Let's get those girlies inside. Hey, girly welly wellies. Yep, time to go. Okay, I relent. I really, really have to go. <laughs> Cheers, chaps. Mm. That was such a relaxed week. It's going to be in stark contrast to next week, which is going to be a bit manic. <laughs> so, yeah, just taking a deep breath this week and uh, enjoying the weather. The weather's been unbelievable. It's really nice because when we've had rain, it's been like one really big downpour for like overnight or a morning. And then the sun comes back again, which is like the perfect weather. It's absolutely wonderful. It's wonderful. Well done, May. You're doing fantastically so far. Yeah, so next week is going to be quite different in feel to this week. So it's Chelsea Flower Show next week, which is very exciting. Uh, so that's going to be nice. So I'll, we'll be at Chelsea. I'll be taking you to Chelsea, but you can't do any um, footage recording at Chelsea. Yeah, the filming thing is a no-no because the BBC owns the rights to all like moving footage from Chelsea. So yeah, I'm just taking stills. So I'm going to have to really up my editing game to try and get some sort of montage thing going on. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Also next week, big thing, the beans are going in. So that is going to be the French beans. So I'm doing three different varieties of French bean, the Bellotti beans, the runner beans. Um, and I've got a whole load of other beans to try out, which um, the same guy who's giving me the uh, Crown Prince plants, George, he gave me a whole selection of quite interesting different types of beans and only a few of each. So I'm gonna have like a couple of teepees. You know, we normally grow all of the beans over the arches. We're still doing that this year with the main crops, but with the ones that he's given me. So actually, yeah, here we go. So we've got uh, a, another climbing French bean, which is called Lazy Housewife. We've got a dwarf French, which is the yin yang one, which is, you know, with the white and the black. So I'm really looking forward to trying that. And I don't normally grow dwarf beans, so that's going to be a good one. We've got another climbing French called... Um... <laughs> The handwriting, Mer Merve de Varice, I think, but I can't really read that. I'll clarify that with you next week when I'm doing it. Oh, and a cucumber. Oh, I didn't, I didn't sew that one. A oh, white wonder. Right, so I'll get that in this afternoon probably and join that up with the ones that are in the greenhouse at the moment. And the other bean is Jacob's Cattle, which is a shelling bean. So he's just given me a couple of each to try. So it's quite exciting. We're going to have a, like, a whole load of little teepees as well as... The arches but they're going in next week so I've got sewing to do ah oh, now talking of sewing had a huge response about the tomato catastrophe so thanks for all the sympathy I really felt it <laughs> 
but there was a lot of suggestions about what it might be and one of the ones which came up so i was discussing this with mum i was like oh so somebody said this and somebody said it could have been this it could have been this and the one that stuck out to me and didn't at first because i was like well it can't be that because we've watered everything with the water with just tap water so when i was talking to mum about that she reminded me that around and we can't remember the timing you see that's the problem can't remember the exact timing but we but they've been doing a lot of work on the water meters and the water piping in our street i'm wondering if they flushed it with something like, I don't think it's just the standard, like, they because we do have fluctuating, like, uh, chlorine and all the bits that they put in there, that, that does happen. And sometimes you have a shower and you come out, like, bright red because you know, like, oh, they've been messing with the water again. But that's never affected the tomatoes before. Um, but, yeah, they're doing the works on the water in the street. It's possible. It's possible. So I don't know. Still don't know. I mean, there's no conclusion to it, but there are lots of suggestions. And... Yeah, I'm going to go through them and really kind of have a bit of an investigate because I have had a couple of people come back and say the same thing has happened to mine. So it's obviously there's something going on. There's something going on. So I'm going to have to get my Sherlock Holmes hat on. I won't go as far as the pipe, though. I might leave that bit. Just the hat. Maybe the coat. Mm. But yes, yeah, so overall, that was a pretty chilled out week very nice like I say next week's not going to be quite so chill although I say this was a chilled out week when I was editing I was like oh yeah really like calm I actually didn't feel that way when I was racing around all week <laughs> I seem to be running from pillar to post all week uh but not actually achieving anything so yeah <laughs> yeah it's a boat ride you know it's funny it's things like that like when you live somewhere you just don't do them like that's a proper touristy thing to do the boat leaves from just down uh, on the pier of Richmond and it's not very expensive. You just get on and you go all the way. You can go to Westminster, you can go to Hampton. You can. So when I used to, I used to have a workshop in Woolwich and I used to get the train from Richmond to Waterloo, which is only like 16 minutes. It's like quite a quick trip. Just goes Richmond, Clapham Junction, Waterloo get off at Waterloo and then I would get on the Clipper Ferry at Waterloo and it'd take you all the way to North Greenwich and then I'd just walk from there I mean it was such a nice way to travel but it's funny how, how you just don't do it that often like the only thing I would say is that they don't go very frequently <laughs> which is why when we went to Hampton Court like I'd forgotten that the ferry to Hampton Court took that long I was thinking it took about maybe like 40 minutes not an hour and 15 so I booked the return journey at the same time so when we got there like we just had to cram a sandwich in our gobs and then I wouldn't say it was a massive picnic but we brought a picnic with us and we just sat on the front lawn of Hampton Court because I wasn't paying to get into the gardens because can you believe that that they're now charging you to get in the gardens I mean that's crazy that never used to be that way we used to I used to just jump on the bus and go and have a wander around because they've got really nice vegetable gardens and like um and a whole walled garden where they've got all this fruit and it used to be just free obviously you had to pay to get in the house but that was it now you have to pay to get in the gardens that's really really pants and i've got a national trust card but they're not on national trust they're on like british houses or some some other scheme that i'm not a member of so yeah that was really disappointing but it actually worked out okay because uh, we wouldn't have been able to do much looking around anyway because i'd misjudged the timings on the boat so by the time we got there we had about 25 minutes to eat our sandwiches and then get back on the boat to go home <laughs> Beautifully planned, Jesse. Beautifully planned. But anyway, it was incredibly nice. Just like, just so calm. Just like going up the river. Beautiful. Like you just, I don't often go that way. Like whenever I'm on the river, it's normally up in town. Not like in my local area. And just, it's so green at the moment because everything's just coming into leaf. Like, oh, it's just gorgeous. And all the, all the birds have got ducklings. There's like baby geese. Did you see the geese um, when we we're having a beer back in Richmond? The two Canadian geese, just like that, with their little, their little ducklings, so sweet. Mm. Anyway, I'm rambling now. Um, next week's going to be manic. I'm preparing myself. Can you tell? <laughs> in fact, this is coming out. It's currently Sunday evening. This is coming out Monday, and the reason that I'm finishing off the vlog Sunday is because it's tomorrow. I'm going to be at Chelsea, so I can't do anything. So Patreon. I'm going to be releasing this video Patreon whilst I'm at Chelsea so uh fingers crossed that goes all right if it doesn't show up you'll know what's happened 
<laughs> there was like no internet or something while I was while I was in Chelsea. But I'll let you know if it's not if it's not going to make it. But anyway, uh, yeah. But for everybody else, this is going to be a cheers for a Tuesday, and I will see you next week for a bit more action. <laughs> cheers, chaps.